In a span of five days, North Carolina has lost two different players to the transfer portal. So who, if anyone, is next? You are Locked on Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, what's up? It's Thursday, April 11th, 2024. Welcome into the Locked on Tar Heels podcast, the only daily North Carolina show out there. I'm your host, Isaac Shea, joined tonight, or today, I should say, as we are every week by our guy, Coach Bill Robinson, the head men's basketball coach at Milligan University. And you're joining us at the place to get your Tar Heels content every single day. Thanks for making us your first listen or watch. And we want to extend a special shout out to all you everydayers out there, as well as the Locked on Tar Heels Discord community. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more new customers. Join today and you'll get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Coming up on today's show, we are going to talk a good bit of portal stuff and roster construction. Going to look at, you know, we obviously know there's been um, both James Aconquo and Seth Trimble out the door. Is anyone else likely to follow? We want to look at what, what kind of roster holes still need to be filled ahead of next year. And, oh baby, Coach was off at the Final Four over the weekend, so he's got some great story time action for us today. But Coach, I, I want to start with the transfer portal stuff. <clears throat> As a reminder, let me let me just take us back to last year so we can get back in that headspace because I think we look at this duo that's out the door and it's like, oh man. But essentially by this point last year, the Tar Heels had lost seven transfers. Caleb Love, Puff Johnson, Dontre Styles, DeMarco Dunn, Justin McCoy, Will Shaver at six, and then um, Simeon Wilcher eventually decommitted after Elliot Cadeau um, uh, came in early last year. And so, Coach, you know, it's like, okay, well, at least we're not there. But Friday of last week, Friday morning, we learned that James Aconquo was entering the transfer portal. And I think you look at that and you say, all right, you know, you, you were here uh, a bit role, a partial role. I get it. You want to go find somewhere where you can play, maybe a mid-major, maybe down at D2, whatever it would be. But then, Coach, I, I was hit real hard. I got to be honest, on Tuesday by the Seth Trimble news. Um, that that was really a bummer. So before we even look at maybe what you know, if anyone else we think will be out the door, I would just love to get your reaction on those two guys, Oconquo and Trimble, who have entered the portal. I think since the, the whole transfer portal thing has started, it's changed. The perceptions have changed because at first it was, oh, man, these guys are all leaving. There's no control of the program. They must hate the coach. You know, th there must be something we don't know about. Uh, I think it's just it's all now about what's best for the player. And uh, James obviously came in just to be a, kind of a emergency backup in case uh, Armando got in trouble, foul trouble, or if he you know got tired or whatever. Um, I don't think anybody's expected him to play a whole lot, and I think it's best for him to go. I, I think everybody completely understands that one. The Seth one was disappointing. Um, does that mean that uh, RJ is definitely coming back? Is that what the conversation was? I don't know. I would hope so. I would hope he wouldn't leave uh, and then see RJ leave as well. That would be more devastating. Um, but I think Seth kind of sees the handwriting on the wall, and it may be time for him to move on just for him to be able to get some more time. He had a great year. I think he's still got a lot of room to grow, and uh, the more minutes he gets, the quicker he will grow. So I, I'm, I was disappointed. I was on the plane coming home from the Final Four when we found out. Uh, definitely disappointed, but we do wish him the very best. That's right. And I think that's so well said, Coach. We need to recognize um, that in this day and age, portal entrance or guys deciding to transfer transfer is not an indictment on the coaching staff or the program, or anything else. There are occasions, certainly, when it is, but not like it used to be where guys, you know, where it was more of that. So just let's continue to reframe our thinking on, on what it means for someone to enter the transfer portal. And as Coach alluded to, you even saw it 
in in Seth's comments in his post as he left. So uh, I think that's a good word from you, Coach. Thanks for sharing that. By the way, I realized I forgot to mention Tyler Nichols' name as part of the seven that transferred out last year, who, by the way, has committed to Vanderbilt. So uh, from Carolina to Virginia Tech to Vandy, where, by the way, um, uh, uh, who am I looking for, Coach? Um, Stackhouse isn't the head coach there anymore at Vandy. And so, um, not, not a Carolina guy going to play for a Carolina guy, but, um, so coach, here's what I want to ask and where I want to have the main part of this conversation with, um, the three guys who are out of eligibility being Armando Baycott, Paxson Wojcik and Cormac Ryan, that gets you down to eight of last year's 11 scholarship players. And then now with a Conquo and Trimble out the door, that gets you down to six of last year's 11 scholarship players remaining. And then you bring in the three freshmen in um, Ian Jackson and Drake Powell and James Brown. So right now there are nine scholarships accounted for with four available. Last year, Coach Davis only used 11 of the 13. If he did that again, there you're basically looking at two more, but there's no guarantees of how many he'll utilize. He could utilize all four that are remaining. He could only utilize one or maybe none. I don't think that'll be the case. And obviously more guys could ultimately end up leaving. But coach, that's the that's the question. Are the defections done or should we brace for more? And I know, you know, coach is not and I'm not bringing any insider knowledge that, that we're saying with this. We're just speculating on it right now based on what we see. So coach, what do you think? My only speculation is I could see Jalen Willers, Jalen Withers uh, decide he wants to go. Uh, I think it, it comes to that postseason conference, that meeting that he has one-on-one -on -one with Hubert. Where does Hubert see him in the plans? Um, I, I like him. I like him a lot. I think his athleticism, his, his versatility, his ability to guard multiple positions, his ability to, to play that pace that, that uh, we obviously want to play. Um, I hope he doesn't. I would be disappointed if he if he left. But that's the only one. I, I think Jalen Washington is going to come back. I think he saw a huge improvement. I think he loves being a Tar Heel, and that's that's part of my my I guess my my disappointment with Seth. Uh, there are two organizations I would love to be an alum of: uh, the New York Yankees. I'd love to go back for you know for for old timers day and be able to play on that field, and and the the North Carolina Tar Heels. I would love to be part of that alumni. So when they have those alumni gatherings, I can be part of that. I could never see myself walking away from a program because of that pride, that, that being part of that something bigger, uh, maybe more than just me going and playing a few more minutes somewhere else. In the long run, I think it would be, I mean, I'd much rather be part of something like this for life. And uh, I guess that's what I'm most disappointed with, with the guys that choose to leave that don't yeah. have to. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hear that in a big way. And I think with the Jalen Withers thing, for me, Coach, it probably comes down to Harrison Ingram's decision. Because if Harrison decides um, to not only put his name in the draft, which I think he should and get that feedback, um, but if he stays in, that that four position is up for grabs between probably Jalen Withers, maybe Zayden Hyde, depending on his development this year, and or somebody from the portal utilizing that scholarship that Harrison Ingram has now uh, left behind. And, and I want to have that conversation in our second segment about um, filling out the roster, but um, he's one that makes sense to me, coach. I'm also like, if Carolina does pursue a center, and again, we're going to talk more about that in a minute, but if that were to happen, I'm curious just where Jalen, the other Jalen, Jalen Washington's head is at on that. Like if, if he's thinking, you know, it's my turn going to be the starting five, but now I'm getting recruited over potentially would he stick around and, and continue to do that? Would he have an opportunity at the four? I don't know, but th those are things I've been thinking on as well. And, and I'm with you. Outside of that, I, I don't know who I would see leaving now, right? Uh, of the six remaining returners that are currently on the roster, you've got Elliot Cadeau, you've got RJ Davis, you've got the two Jalens, and um, Harrison Ingram. And who am I leaving out? I've forgotten somebody. Hey. I only know. Hi. And Zayden. Yes, who I just mentioned. Thank you. And so out of those guys, it's like, you know, I just, I see the path for all of them um, in, in some various regard. And so I, I'm with you. I think it is one of the Jalens that if somebody else were to peace out, it might be one of them. But as you said about Seth, 
Um, I'm hopeful that they will stick around and, and see this thing through ultimately coach. Do you think, and, and obviously we don't know who else is going to come in. And so that's part of the, the calculus as well. But as of today, as we record on Wednesday, April 10th, if you had to make a call, do you think there will be any defections or not? Personally, right now, I think not. I think the guys, I think Zayden High loves Carolina. I think he loves being part of the program. I think he's a, you know, I'm hoping, I don't know him personally. I hope he's a lifer because I just like him. I think he's, yeah, I think he's, he's who Carolina people are. He's just a great kid, great young man, plays hard, and he's going he's gonna to get better every year, every day, I hope, because of his attitude. Um, and I, Jalen Washington is very similar. I think he just loves being there. He, he's going to get better. He's going to get time. And uh, I think he, he just, I mean, I think he's a Tar Heel. Yeah. Uh, so I'm really hopeful that this is this is where we are. And then we add pieces from here. Yeah, I love that. That's good. And by the, I meant to say this on Jalen Withers, too. I think you talked about his athleticism with Seth out the door. I would say Jalen Withers is the most athletic person on the roster, pending maybe Ian Jackson, what we see from him when he comes in. Would you what, where would you go with that, coach? Uh, yeah, I think he is. Drake Powell's pretty athletic, too. I, yeah, I really enjoy stuff too but uh you know I, I would put them at the top for sure yeah all right good stuff well as i mentioned we do want to talk about what are those roster holes that need to be filled with the final four scholarships what are the areas of concern what are the areas of needed depth or even maybe a starter and that's where we want to turn the conversation next we'll do that in just a second Right after I tell you about game time, now that the tournament's over, it's time to go take in some MLB games, maybe like a Yankees game like Coach was just talking about. Or if you want to see a better team, you can go check out the Braves. Yeah, that's shots fired at you, my friend. Maybe it's a last-minute trip, or you and a group of friends decide spur of the moment to go hit up a game in town. Well, great news. Game time is now an authorized ticket dealer uh, marketplace of Major League Baseball, making getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and a lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. I love this feature. It's last minute deals. You can save up to 60% off buying last minute tickets for sports or concerts, comedy, music, whatever it is. I even you know, I, I just sometimes struggle with buying third-party tickets because I'm worried about them being bogus. But with game time ticket coverage, there's this peace of mind because your purchase is covered by the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download their app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. We've just had conversation about the likelihood that there are any more portal defections for North Carolina. We've seen James Aconquo and now Seth Trimble leave. And as the roster where it is right now, there are six returning players pending any other decisions and then three incoming freshmen. That gives us a total of nine scholarship players, meaning that right now, Coach, there are four available scholarships that Coach Davis and his staff could utilize. As you look at the roster right now, Coach, what are the biggest holes that you see that need to be filled? Obviously, we need a big man. And I think we need a starter in that position. Uh, no offense to, to Jalen Washington or Jalen Withers. In my mind, neither one of them are a true five. And there's there's going to be guys out there. There's already a couple of guys out there that are, are very intriguing. Uh, Ballo from uh, Arizona, the Wolf from uh, from Yale. Uh, two totally different type players, depending on which way uh, coaches want to go. Uh, it always kills me when, when somebody says, well, in, in Hubert's system, you need somebody. Well, Hubert's system is – He'll take whatever the pieces he has and and mold it, put his system around wh however he wants it to be. So it just depends on what they decide, you know, to go after. Uh, he's been really quiet about who he's going after. He's not really uh, showed his cards, which I like. I like that. Um, I don't think he needs to go out there and, and announce every guy who's coming on campus. Um, it makes it more intriguing for us too, I think. But um, <laughs> I think the center position to get somebody who you know is going to play. 30 minutes a game. I think that's the, the number one priority at this point. 
I'm right with you. And I'm also with you that I think that one is a starter that you're looking for, not depth. This time last year, that was a key piece we were looking for and, and ended up being James Aconquo was, as you called it earlier, I think you said Armando Baycott insurance. And that's exactly right and what that was. And thankfully, Aconquo wasn't needed too often as that insurance because Armando was able to stay healthy. Um, Coach, those are some of the names I'm really liking. Uh, Umar Balo and, and Danny Wolf. There were some rumblings on Wednesday um, of Wolf working to schedule a visit with North Carolina. I've not been able to confirm any of those, so I'll just throw that out as rumors right now, and we'll obviously continue to watch for if there's confirmation for that. And if so, obviously, we'll pass it along. Coach, you mentioned that as a, a starting position. I think right now, again, with the roster that, that we have at this moment, I think you feel good at the one with Elliot. I think you feel good at the two with RJ. Obviously, in this exercise, again, we're assuming that RJ's back. If if there's difference, obviously we'll we'll talk about that. And the same thing, same exact thing with Harrison Ingram. You feel good at the four, assuming he's back. And so, coach, that leads me to the small forward, the three vacated um, by Cormac Ryan's uh, lack of remaining eligibility. Is that another area that you look at of, of needed roster addition, or do you think the starting small forward is on the roster already? The, the fear is if you bring somebody in to start that the young kids are going to, they could decommit, they could end up, you know, whatever the decisions are, you don't want to, 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 to scare anybody away. Uh, at the same time, you need some competition. You have to be competitive in your own practices to be competitive against other teams. Obviously, I think to get somebody in there who can not not just start but to provide some depth at that three, uh, but that's the one that that's dicey. I think it's so it's it's hard to know exactly what to do because you don't want to uh, you don't want to offend anybody, you don't want to upset anybody. But at the same time, you, you're North Carolina. You've got to get better. You've got to get the most talent you possibly can. So uh, I think the three you need to go out and try to find somebody who is going to play 15, 20 minutes a game for sure, whether it's a starter or whether it's off the bench. Yeah, because I. I'm with you. I really like what both Ian Jackson and Drake Powell bring. I'm not convinced at this point in their development, and I put that caveat on it very specifically, but at this point in their development that they are knocked down dead eye shooter enough to, to do what you need them to do. Um, especially not yet knowing what Elliot's development is going to be as a three point shooter and not, um, sure yet what that who that five will be if it is Umar Balo for example he has literally never taken a three-pointer in his college career and so you know if if that's what you got at your bookends you feel good if it's RJ Davis and Harrison Ingram but that makes me feel like you want to have somebody with a more certain three-point shot to balance out what I, I think is going to be a great skill set that both Ian and Drake bring but I'm really looking for something of a of a kind of a sniper coach. I know a lot of a lot of times we we've been talking about. I don't think you and I have talked about, but but I have on the show is Cade Tyson from Belmont, Hunter Tyson's brother that played at Clemson. Um, is, is that the kind of player you think would fit well in that role? I think he fit great because he's going to run the system. He understands how to play the game. He'll share the basketball. And when he gets open, he's going to knock down open shots. We don't need him to create. We don't need him to do anything special. We just need him to be able to get the toes behind the line and catch and shoot it. Uh, so I think that's a huge piece. And then I still think we need a handler. We're going to need somebody to, to give some depth at the point guard position. That might be the easiest one to find. And it might be the hardest one to find because it's it's one of those really special niche type, uh, you know, situations. And if guys want to play and play a lot, uh, they may choose not to come. But I think Carolina, the brand, being part of that Carolina family, uh, there's guys dying to be part of it and be willing to do whatever just to be part of that. To put that Carolina blue jersey, you know, on, I think they're willing to do that. Yeah. And, and you know, because I try to think about the backcourt rotation this year where it was essentially Elliot, RJ, Seth, and whether, you know, I guess you kind of put Cormac out on the wing and, and don't really think of that specifically as the backcourt, but it was like a three smaller guard rotation. And so you start to think about that with Elliot and RJ and, you know, how, how do Ian and, and Drake mix in? Um, and then what kind of person fills out like another Paul handler? Is it somebody that is relegated to the, to a similar role 
like James Aconquo was this year? Or is it somebody that's going to see some more minutes? That's It's hard to know. And, and I think you're right. It's going to take a very special and unique person that's willing to, to be part of that. And so I'm really curious um, to see what happens. So coach, of those four scholarships that are available right now, I, I think we're pretty firm on, yes, we need to add someone in the front court. I think we're pretty firm on adding something at the small forward position and then probably somebody at the one as well. So right now, if you're Hubert Davis, um, that makes 12 scholarships. Is that kind of what, what you would look at coach? Is that too many? Is it not enough? Would you look to add a 13th as well? What, what are your thoughts on that with your coaching hat on? I, Hubert talked about it last year when we talked in the spring, he, he was going to get to 11 and stop scholarship wise uh, and then just fill in the, the end of the roster. But I don't think, in my opinion, my coaching hat on, that 11, there's a couple of those guys you're just not really 100% sure about. He knew what he was getting with RJ. He knew he was getting with Armando. He knew he was going to get with Cormac. He knew he was going to get with Harrison. There's got to be some some more confidence in some of those guys last year than this year. So I see him giving a 12th one. I don't think a 13th. I think we got space for three more guys. I don't think he'll go to that 13th. I, I just – it's too hard to keep 13 guys happy. It's hard enough to keep 10 guys happy. Let's be honest. It's, happy. it's hard to keep one guy happy. And our jobs as coaches is not to keep them happy, but we've got to keep them connected. We've got to keep them motivated. Um, you know, we need to find a guard, somebody like um, Benny Geeler that Stanford had this year. You know, a kid who didn't play a whole lot, but just kept fighting and kept, you know, just and all of a sudden at the end of the year, he's playing, you know, 20, 25 minutes a game. Somebody like that is just a hard-nosed, good point guard somebody who's who's willing to take whatever time he gets and and willing to fight for time uh, on a daily basis and i think that that would be good for everybody especially good for for uh elliot had to have somebody push him every day in practice uh, that's a good word too coach is that true honest to goodness competition positionally i think is important as well i'm with you i like that 12 for this team and obviously we're gonna have to continue to say this until we know more but obviously all of this calculus changes if rj's out the door or if Harrison's out the door, either of those to pursue professional activities. And unfortunately, by the way, the calendar rolls around. If one or both of them declare for the draft to test where they're at, it's going to be a waiting game even longer than it already is. So just buckle up for that, that possibility, and uh, we'll know when we know. So, well, folks, oh, go ahead, Coach, sorry. No, I was just saying, I think that's the great plan about where we're headed right now, and it gives time for those freshmen to prove themselves. Um, and it's, we're going to be shocked. I think, I think we're going to find a surprise somewhere along the way where, um, it's going to make sense, but it's going to be just the mind of Hubert and his staff. And they're going to say, this is the perfect Carolina guy for the perfect, what we're looking for. And I think it, it's going to come from somewhere that, that nobody expects it. That's my personal opinion right now. I like it, man. That, that would, that's just fun to think about, you know, I, I like that and I hope it happens. Well, folks, uh, we crowned the national champion on Monday. Coach Rob was there in Phoenix for all the Final Four festivities. Got some great stories to share with us. And you know that Carolina family runs deep, and that's exactly where this story is going. So Carolina family story time, Final Four edition, coming up in just a second. Right after I tell you about FanDuel, it's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball is finally in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 win or lose. You can bet on everything from slap shots to home runs and slam dunks all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. How about some 2025 national championship odds? Unfortunately, Duke leads the way at plus 1,100, followed by Kansas at plus 1,200, UConn plus 1,300, and then Carolina, Alabama, and Houston are all tied at plus 1,500. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Oh man, it is time for story time with Coach Rob. Always love it when we get here. Uh, Coach went and braved the desert in the Pacific time zone. Man, Arizona, what a confusing state along with Indiana, not observing daylight savings time, those crazy kooks. I got friends that live in Arizona. I never know if it's mountain time or Pacific time. So anyway, Coach, can't wait to hear your stories of how the Carolina family runs so deep. 
share it. Well, we were at camp last year, coach's party, and uh, getting ready to leave one night and just kind of walking out and say, hey, guys, I'm going to go to bed, you know. And uh, a couple of my my assistants were sitting at a table with a couple other guys, and they said, hey, let's talk about the book. I, oh, yeah, I love talking about the book. Obviously, we've done that an awful lot. And uh, we just start telling stories. Well, one of the guys at the table, his name was Jason Feldman. I didn't know Jason very well. I knew he was a camp guy, but uh, never worked in the gym with him, never really sat and had a meal with him. But we just started talking in this group. And, and we talked to about one o'clock in the morning, a group of eight to 10 guys. And uh, somehow the final four came up about next year. And he said, are you going to go? I said, well, I usually go, go every year except for COVID. And uh, he said, well, I live in Phoenix. Would you want to stay with me? And I'm like, well, sh yeah, sure. It's, Small college guy, you know, if we can save some money, especially, you know, thousand, fifteen hundred dollars for housing, we'd love to do that. And I said, Well, can I bring my staff? And he said, Sure, how many are coming? I said, Well, at least two, maybe maybe three, uh, can four come? And he's like, Yeah, bring everybody. Uh, and that's what the Carolina family is about. And just the ability, he opened up our his house for us. Um, and and we had guys sleeping on uh air mattresses and a couch, and uh, my son Will slept we slept on the floor next to me on the air mattress and in, in uh, Jason's uh, spare bedroom. And it was just one of those things where it doesn't matter how long you've known somebody, how well you know somebody, if they're Carolina camp guy, then you're good to go. Uh, so Friday we go over to watch practices and uh, you know, there's what 50,000 people there, whatever it was, you know, you're sitting there watching the game, get or the practices, get ready to walk out. And there's Barry Uzel from Markham college up in Philly one of my buddies from camp who does our, our, our warm, he's the, the, the hype king. He gets everybody warmed up before. And if, if you know, you know about Barry, because it's a, oh yeah, and you better be clapping. And he's unbelievable. He's the best warm up guy in camp. And there he is walking uh, outside of practice uh, at the final four. So we end up, you know, catching up and talking to him for a little bit. We get given tickets to the legacy breakfast, the John Wooden award that they give out uh Lionel Hollins former Sixer former son got the award this year beautiful banquet um uh, one of my assistants that I played for when I was in college he kind of runs it with his wife and she takes care of the tickets they had five extra tickets they gave it to my whole staff we go to our table having no clue who we're going to sit with and there's coach Dominguez from Western Washington University Washington State who's also a Carolina camp guy he sees me and the first thing he says hey how's the book coming <laughs> so there, there's my, my, you know, we get there Thursday, stay with Jason Friday at practice, run into Barry Saturday, run into the coach. And it's, it's, that's the way the Carolina world is. And I know we're just a stepchild of the actual program, the actual family, but the Carolina way extends way beyond just uh, the team into camps, into Montrose camp and into the alumni. Uh, it's just, a, it's a really cool place to be. I mean, I just, it's just, it gives you chills, coach, how uh, just interconnected this whole thing is. Th thanks for sharing. Because even if, I, I think what's neat about that, a lot of times it's like stories about the names we know, we know when you're sharing stories from your book. But I love in this case, it's like probably a lot of those names are names that people just don't know, but it doesn't matter because it's Carolina family and people come together and take care of one another. And so that's what this is all about. So um, coach quickly, were any, any, uh, names or players, any random people that you ran into? It was like, Oh, there's that person or anything like that. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, Sunday night got, uh, Jack Frost to my, my former assistant who was at Stanford this year. We just got together for dinner on Sunday night. It just happened to be after the sun's game, we're downtown right outside the, uh, Yukon, um, ho hotel. And we're just on the street talking and, Omeka Okafor just walks by. I mean, it's just, oh, there, there he goes. And, oh, yeah. And uh, Jamie Smith, a former assistant, my former manager at Carolina, and uh, came from Carolina straight to me and when I was coaching and met him real quick to say hello. And we were walking up the stairs to the restaurant to meet him, and, and Hunter Dickinson's walking down the stairs. And you're like, oh, yeah, there's Hunter Dickinson. It's just, but that's the great thing about the Final Four. You got to keep your eyes up. You can't be on your phone. You have Literally to look up. Way up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You just never know. Uh, you know, Jerome Tang, get to see him, you know, just just hanging out, just walking the halls. And um, the funniest one is the Danny Green dunk. We always talk about the Danny Green dunk because we run into Paulus everywhere. And <laughs> just walking down, you, know, and you, you want to sit around and say, hey, hey can, can, can we talk about Danny's dunk? And, you, you know, obviously we don't do it, but every time we see him, we just kind of laugh at him like, oh. Got to talk about Danny every time he's around. So 
but you just never know who you're going to see. It's a wonderful time and uh, just a, it's an incredible just uh, atmosphere and, and the town's just a buzz and it's just so much fun. That's incredible. Poor Greg Paulus, man. That To North Carolina people, that's who, what he's known for is being on the wrong side of the Danny Green dunk. But I say I feel bad for him. I kind of love it, and it's hilarious. So that's great. Okay. Um, man, Emeka Okafor is one of my favorite UConn Huskies of all time. I, I loved watching him play. I'm hopeful that you punched Hunter Dickinson in his bad shoulder that got separated earlier. In the No, I'm just kidding. I'm really curious to see if he decides to come back to kansas or not for those who run aware he does have another year of eligibility so we'll we'll see um kind of what happens there so great stuff coach thanks for sharing those stories excited to hear uh more you know as we get into the off season obviously um get get it right on back to story time and so really looking forward to more of that folks thanks so much for being with us always great to be with coach rob i hope you uh, appreciate him and his time as much as i know i do um, it's just so meaningful. So, Coach, thank you. Um, it's been a great season and, and excited to keep on rolling together. Gang, if you are not part of the Locked on Tar Heels Discord community, you need to come do that. By the way, you know, we've been talking about the Carolina family. This is another extension of that. It's free and available. The link is in the show notes. We'd love to have you join that. If you haven't subscribed to the show on audio or video, man, same thing. It's free and easy to do. Any podcast audio platform, you can find the show and subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube and you've never subscribed, stop and do it right now. It would mean so much to us and be really helpful to growing the show even more. It's always a great day to be a Tar Heel. We'll be right back with you tomorrow to wrap up the week. But until then. Peace.